Good afternoon, I'm Brian Sterling, Director of South Carolina Department of Corrections. With me I have Henry McMaster, Governor of South Carolina, and I've got uh, SLED Chief Mark Keel. Last night at about 7.15, a fight broke out at Lee Correctional in one dorm. Our EAC was notified. Shortly thereafter, one of our response team was notified and started reporting to the prison from around the state. Those folks are at their homes or other places, and then they report to Lee Correctional. About an hour and 15 minutes later, a another fight broke out in two other dorms um, at Lee Correctional. At 9 o'clock, other response teams, SITCON and our SORT team, were activated and responded. Around 9.20, 9.23, SLED responded also. At 11.30, we entered the first dorm at Lee to take that dorm back. We had enough people there to enter safely, and we took that dorm back. At 12.30, we went and entered the second dorm at Lee and safely took that dorm back. At 2 o'clock, we entered the last dorm at Lee and started conducting the roll call counts. As you know, there were 17 people that were injured last night and seven deaths. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I think uh, Governor McMaster may want to say something, or I'm happy yes. to answer questions. Uh, thank you, Rick Sterling. Well, we know that uh, prisons are places where people who have misbehaved on the outside go for rehabilitation and also to take them from the general population. It's not a surprise when we have uh, violent events take place inside the prison, but any prison in the country. We have rules and regulations, we have protocols, we have training, and there's an enormous effort made to be sure that the, these kinds of things do not happen or are kept at a minimum. Uh, it is unfortunate when they do happen, but this is one of those instances uh, when they did. Um, Chief? I just comment that uh, we assisted South Carolina Department of Corrections as we always do. Uh, we responded with them last night. Our SWAT team had a full response to that facility as well. We will uh, work with them now, our crime scene units and our investigators, to uh, investigate with police services, with their police services unit, to determine uh, what happened and uh, how these deaths occurred at Lee Correctional last night. And I want to thank, um, as a director, I want to thank SLED, and they're always there when we need them, Lee County EMS and the other EMSs that showed up um, to transport these folks out, out. They went to McLeod and Toomey Hospitals. Um, I know a lot of people are going to wonder what happened. What we believe from the initial investigation is that this was all about territory. This is about contraband. This is about cell phones, and you've heard us talk about these over and over again. These folks are fighting over real money and real territory while they're incarcerated. That's why we've been leading the effort in South Carolina to ask the FCC to allow us to block this signal. We have a meeting at the beginning of next month that we hope will be fruitful with the industry, and we can talk about solutions. But until that's done, the folks that are incarcerated are going to continue their criminal ways from behind bars which is not only dangerous inside our institutions, but it's also dangerous outside our institutions. That's why we need the, the FCC to allow us to block the signal or the cell phone company to come to us with a technology that would allow us to control these signals. Thank you. Director, you've said multiple times, you've expressed, you and the governor have expressed your concerns about cell phones, about how they allow inmates to, as you have said yourself, carry out their criminal, criminal enterprises from within prison. We've heard from prisoners inside Lee who were there last night who described a macabre scene that they saw unfold. Bodies piling up outside the prison while there were no correctional officers around, while there were no medical personnel around, attempting to render any aid. What do you say to those statements that are coming out? And I'm sure I'm not the only reporter who's heard some of those things. Today. Sure. So before we can go into a dorm, just so you know, there's about 250, 260 inmates in each dorm. We're not going to just send one or two officers in there. We're going to gather a force that is safe for all our officers, and we're going to go in and we're going to take that dorm back with force 
and if there's any resistance, we'll be able to put that resistance down immediately. So we're not going to put our officers and other staff in harm's way. We gathered as many people as we could, as quickly as we could, and went in as soon as we thought it was safe for our staff. How many officers were in this On staff last night, there was 44, so uh, I think, let me just do some quick math. We got eight, uh, I think about 12. We can, we, I can check that number, but I think it was about 12. What we've done at Lee is we've doubled the shift. So the night shift comes in a little early, we pay them overtime, and the day shift stays about an hour or two late and we pay them overtime just so we can have enough people there. Uh, normally, there'd be about 20 people there, but last night there were 44 at that institution. And it's a large institution, as you all know. What's the vacancy right now for that institution? It's about 28% frontline officers, which is lower than it's been. How many officers were in the dorms where the fights or the incident? Two on each side, three dorms, so six, uh, 12. Or, yeah. What exactly do the officers do when the fight broke out? What, they tra what they're trained to do is they're trained to, if they can stop it, stop it with their own safety. But if they can't, again, they're outnumbered. So they're trained to back out of that dorm and call for support. And that's exactly what we believe they did last night because support started showing up immediately. So did all 44 of those officers go into these dorms along with SLED? Officers went in. I'm not sure it was the 44 that were there. Um, our rapid response team, our sort team, and our sitcom team would also go in. They had to uh, monitor the other dorms. They had to make sure those other dorms on the other side of the yard were secure. So they secured and locked down those dorms. Obviously, the governor talked about how people are incarcerated for a reason, because they have been adjudicated guilty of some crime and they are there. But what do you say to the families of inmates who are concerned about the safety of their relatives who are in your institutions and are now hearing these stories about their loved ones, for whatever reason, lying there dead and dying and not dead, while no one is there to come help them? What do you say to those families? I say that we did everything that we could in our power to get there as quickly as possible. Again, we have to go in and make sure that we go in safely with enough force so if there is a response from the inmate population, we can put it down immediately. Were there any weapons used in this altercation aside from knives or makeshift knives? We've heard that perhaps were some plugs used. Can anyone speak to that? That's going to be part of the investigation. Were any of the injuries caused by any of the officers or the officers from there? There was no resistance when we went in to take the dorms back. What was the status of the other inmates that were injured? They're all being treated. Um, some have come back, I think, but I think there's still, I think maybe all of them are still out and being treated outside medical. Has it been any, are they all, what's their status, good, I'll get you that. Has there been any federal assistance offered or received? I've spoken about, uh, to the president, I've spoken to the warden, I've spoken to the sheriff, I've spoken to the chief, I've spoken to the director, and spoken to the attorney general of South Carolina. Can you be specific on why how funds are so um, we've been partnering with the Lee Sheriff's Office, and you've, you all have heard me talk about that, where we've been intercepting contraband. But I, I would think our preliminary investigation has found that this is gangs fighting over territory. And if they're incarcerated, then they're going to have to have a cell phone to continue their criminal ways from behind bars. And that's just the preliminary investigation. Um, and more to come on that as SLED and our police services continue this investigation. We've seen it over and over again. Captain Johnson, I don't know if anybody was at the crime victims thing last week and heard his uh, impassioned speech about cell phones. He was shot multiple times in his house. We've had people arrested here. There's been people arrested, inmates from Georgia, California. Charles Manson had a cell phone. Uh, it's a problem. I mean, it's not a South Carolina problem. It is a national problem. Until the industry starts taking this seriously, this is going to continue to happen. Were these fights coordinated some way by the cell phones, or do you know that? We don't know. All I can tell you is that it happened in one dorm, and nobody left that dorm, and soon thereafter, other dorms found out about it. So we believe that was the tool that was used, but we don't know. Um, that's what the investigation will tell us. Director, you said that everyone on your side followed what their training says and followed their protocol, at least as far as you know. As far as I know, the correct. The investigation is still ongoing. But you also laid out a timeline of how things happened and how that response went. 
by all of that, are you saying that by the training, by protocol, it's going to take hours whenever anything like this happens? Those are hours that may, could have made the difference for some of these inmates who died. Well, so this was three separate incidents. We've had you know, one in one dorm, one in two, the second dorm, one in the third dorm. So normally, y'all that cover this know, we go in, we clear a dorm, takes about an hour to an hour and a half to put everybody back in their room to do the count and make sure everything's secure. Well, this is three different dorms. We also had to evacuate the wounded, and people are leaving, they're going to medical, so it was not um, a normal situation where we were just going in and putting people back in their dorms. There were people that were injured, and we were trying to render the aid that we could at that time. Director, you said that there are 250 to 260 inmates in each dorm. Are they in a common area, or are they, you know, double bunked or triple bunked? They'd be double bunked in a cell. And, it, and that'd be split. It's a butterfly, so there'd be probably 130 and 130. But they're in individual cells. Individual by themselves? No, I'm sorry. They're in two individual cells. So like double, bu double bunked and in a cell. And they were locked up at the time of these? They were, being, they were being counted and locked up. That's when it started. And that's why we have the two um, shifts there at that time to make sure that it's done appropriately and we have enough officers We've there. We've heard from inmates who say that the locking mechanisms on those doors don't work. Will a review of those kinds of measures be part of the investigation of what happened? Yes, they will. Director, do you have surveillance cameras monitoring the inmates? We do. Okay. And if so, do you have video of the altercation, how it started? Will that be a part of the investigation? That will be part of the investigation. We Two did. more questions. There are, there are videos and photographs that are circulating on social media of inmates piled against a fence. One inmate appears to be injured because he's moving blood on them. Uh, can you confirm the authenticity of those photos and videos that are circulating? I cannot confirm the authenticity of those photos, but I do know um, that they, there were inmates that were um, put against a fence. Do you know by whom? I think it was by the inmates. It was not by the staff. Let's be clear. Was the uh, staffing adequate? 44 at um, 44 at Lee is good. We always want more. But again, as I said, because of um, what our operations staff did, Mike McCall uh, decided to do this a couple months ago, we normally would have only had 16 to 20. Um, and, you know, I'd like to thank the governor and I'd like to thank the legislature. We've expanded our pay for officers tremendously. We were losing 150 officers every year from 2011 till about two years ago, and then we broke even. Last year, we were up about 100. Our pay for level three officers has gone up about 24%. Um, when I first took over here, it was about $27,000, and we couldn't keep people. Now we're turning that tide, and the governor put in his budget about uh, just under $5 million, and our officers, hopefully, if they go with the Senate version, will get another $1,000 to make us competitive. We're also paying overtime um, to pay the officers a, a good wage for a job that is, as you can see, very difficult. So thank you all very much. So overtime is what, after 12 hours? Technically, yes, but there's a... A, a number in there that's um, it has to be over a certain amount. It's a state regulation. We can get you that number, but basically, if they're working over 12 hours on a shift, they would get overtime for that day. It's a little more complicated than that, but easy explanation is yes. Jamie, last question. Sure, Governor. You mentioned in your opening remarks that um, that it's un that these types of events are unfortunate, but sometimes they happen because we have violent people behind bars. Um, that kind of sounds like it's uh, it's okay for this to be sort of the status quo, although it's an unfortunate event. Do you, as governor, think that this should just be something we expect to happen, or do you think there's something that needs to be done? Correctly? I'm referring to the history of prisons and the history of people in prisons. When people the uh, these people in this prison, many of them have very violent records and we cannot expect them to give up their violent ways when they go to prison. They take those violent ways with them. Uh, uh, we do the very best we can to see that these things do not happen, and we try to minimize them and learn from them every time. Is there anything that you immediately want to see happen to try to prevent something like this from happening? Well, as has been explained, there is a analysis and investigation of exactly what happened. In, and uh, that may give us some, some ideas. But again, these are dangerous people. And they are in prison because they have been judged to be so dangerous as to be required to be kept in prison. So we cannot expect them to give up their, their dangerous 
ways just because they're in prison. Will jamming cell signals fix this? It'll go a long way. Jamming those cell phone signals will do a lot. And Director Sterling should be commended. He has led this battle for the whole country. And I know that there are prisons all around this country that would be safer, federal prisons, state prisons, all, if this jamming were allowed. Because you can have a dangerous, even violent person in the prison who is protected from interruption because he's in prison and locked up, protected even from the authorities, from the guards, because he's in a lockdown, who can communicate with people outside and run his criminal activities from there. And as the director mentioned, there's one man, Captain Johnson, who was shot four times just on such a basis as that. Someone inside contracted with someone outside to kill him. And there are drug crimes. There are all sorts of crimes going on, as well as money being made by criminals, dangerous criminals who are locked up through these contraband cell phones that the FCC will not allow us to block. They're able to conduct their criminal enterprises. And it is an absolute outrage that that is the law. But we are doing our best to see that that FCC rule is changed and changed as quickly as possible. Thank you, guys. Is there any rehabilitation place that will help? Yes, rehabilitation. That always helps. The fourth in the country.